If you would, we're going to pray as we get into God's Word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Word. We receive your Word written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will take hold of it, be hearers and doers of it. We'll see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We begun sharing with you on the subject of the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday morning, we talked about an important subject, about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, the difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the receiving of the Holy Spirit, and the filling of the Holy Spirit, very important for every believer to understand. We talked about the fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost. And on Wednesday, we talked about how the Holy Spirit works. As he works to accomplish his will and to bring forth his word, accomplish things in your life and, in, and bringing forth God's purposes. Today we're going to talk about the subject of how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God expects us to be led by the Spirit of God. And notice, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you're the sons of God. That means if you're not led by the Spirit of God, are you really a son of God? You're not walking like one. You're not going to see God manifest himself because the Father manifests himself to his sons who walk in obedience to the Word. He expects us to be led by the Holy Spirit. And he will accomplish this in our life as we understand what is necessary to be led by the Holy Spirit in our life. Now we talked about the fact that when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you get born again, you get a brand new spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And when you get this new spirit, this is the Spirit of Jesus Christ that comes into you. As we saw in Galatians chapter 4, in verse 6, Because your sons God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. You now have relationship to Him as your Heavenly Father. What did you get when you were born again? You got the Spirit of Jesus Christ, which comes from where? From Jesus it is not the Holy Spirit. There's been much teaching in the body of Christ that says the Spirit of Christ and the Holy Spirit are the same. It is error. It is false teaching. The Spirit of Christ comes from Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes from the Father, as we talked about. So once you are born again and you have the Spirit of Jesus Christ, now you are to receive the Holy Spirit. By the way, as we mentioned, if you didn't hear the message, I encourage you to hear last Sunday morning's message if you don't understand this. When you receive Jesus' personal Lord and Savior, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that brings you into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. The presence of God, we're immersed in. We receive Jesus. He takes the old Spirit out. A new Spirit comes on the inside of us, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And then it says we've all been made to drink into one spirit. Drinking is where something comes into us, and that is synonymous with receiving the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is received after we are born again, and now once we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, there's something else that we need to do. We need to get filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We talked about this, and bring this up for a moment again, out of Ephesians. Chapter 5, in verse 18. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The word filled is important to look at in the Greek because this is an imperative mood verb. It's a command, first of all. You are commanded to be filled with the Spirit. And it is a present tense verb indicating that this is an ongoing action and work in your life. It literally would be translated be being continuously filled with the Spirit. It's a passive voice verb because you can't do it. Somebody else does it. The passive voice means the subject is being acted upon by somebody else. And who does it? God does it. So we are commanded to be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit and God's going to do it. So what's our part to play? We do the things that cause him to be able to do this. Verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. As you praise and worship God, it has a dual effect. You are speaking this in praise and worship to the Lord, but you also are speaking to yourselves. 
to bring a filling of the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit is for the influence of the Holy Spirit for the service of the Lord. Another way that you see this filling of the Spirit come is in Acts chapter 4, verse 31. When they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Prayer brought forth a filling of the Holy Spirit. And then they spake the word of God with boldness because the Holy Spirit influences you to do the things that God wants you to do. In this case, going forth and speaking the word with boldness. And it says in verse 33, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. As you go forth, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking forth the word with boldness, the power of God and the grace, the favor of God will be working through you to minister to others. The filling of the Holy Spirit is an ongoing, continuous process. Praise, worship, prayer, pray in tongues, things that you need to be doing on a daily basis. So we understand that when we get born again, that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We come into the body of Christ. When we receive Jesus, personal Lord and Savior, we get the Spirit of Christ. Then we receive the Holy Spirit, that's the Spirit of the Father that proceeds from the Father, and we receive Him with our faith to come and dwell in us and he does come to dwell in our spirit. Then, we are to continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit. Of course, if you're gonna be led by the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit working in your life. He comes to dwell in you, you get filled up with the Holy Spirit for his influence, you'll be in a position for him to carry out his leading in your life. Now in John chapter 14, verse 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that's what the Holy Spirit is, that, you may, that he may abide with you forever. By the way, the word may abide here <clears throat> is not a factual statement. It is a conditional statement. The reason is because it's a subjunctive mood. If you haven't been here before or you're just coming and learning all these things, the moods are extremely important to see what's said. If it's a factual statement, it's what's called the indicative mood. It's used some 15,000 times in the Greek New Testament. But this is the subjunctive mood. Whenever you see the subjunctive mood, it expresses things contrary to fact, conditional upon conditions being met. So that means that he may abide with you forever if you meet the conditions. Certainly, if you turn away from the Lord and reject him and, and go another whole, whole direction, uh, he's not going to be abiding with you forever. So he's come to dwell in you. And if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. He's going to work in your life. And it says in verse 17, he's the spirit of truth. He's always going to do things. If you're going to be led, it's always going to be in line with the truth, the word. Whom the world cannot receive. Remember, the world can't receive the Holy Spirit, only believers. Because it seeth him, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. God wants you to know the Holy Spirit. You can develop a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the communion with the Holy Spirit, as you learn to fellowship with him Hear what he tells you to do. He'll always tell you things that are in line with the word of God, directing you what to do. We see in verse 26, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you've got to be taught the things of the Lord because he's always going to do things in line with his word. And he's also going to bring all things to your remembrance. That means the things that he has taught and written in your heart and mind he will bring these up to your remembrance. You know, like he quickens it up to your mind. It comes up to you. Scriptures come up out of nowhere sometimes, you might think. That's the Holy Spirit bringing things up to you. He will bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So, the Holy, you can count on the Holy Spirit to bring these things. So, when these scriptures come up, it's know what's going on. The Holy Spirit's bringing this up because he's wanting to say something to you or direct you in some path. In John chapter 15, we see in verse 26, When the comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, he comes from the Father, he proceeds from the Father, even the spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. One thing, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, he will always testify the things of Jesus. He will not say things that are contrary to the word of God. Anybody that ever says the Holy Spirit has told them something that's contrary to the Word of God, you know it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was a false spirit. And we have many people today that have listened to false spirits, unfortunately. 
instead of understanding that it's got to be in line with the Word of God. What else will the Holy Spirit do? John 16, verse 8. You're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. You have to know what He's going to do. When you go preaching the gospel to people, He's going to do these things. Verse 8, when He has come, He will reprove or convict the world of sin. Singular. One sin of not believing on Jesus. So you preach the good news, the gospel to them, that they need to receive Jesus, and that's what the Holy Spirit's going to convict them of, that sin of not believing on Jesus. Also of righteousness, and also of judgment. Sin, because they believe not on me. Righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you see me no more. Judgment, because the prince of this world is judged, or more literally, has been judged. His judgment is set. It just hasn't been carried through yet until the time appointed when it will, the end of the time when the lease is done for man's hand, which was given into hand, Satan's hand, when then the judgments will begin to come and he will be dealt with. It says of judgment, because the prince of this world has been judged, it's a perfect tense verb, meaning it's already been accomplished with present effects going on. It is not going to be changed. The judgment is set for the devil. So you need to let people know they need to make Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior, be born again. Jesus is the righteous one. He's at the right hand of the Father. And Satan, who is their owner and who they're under control of, has been judged and they're under his judgment unless they receive Jesus and have a change of ownership, which must happen. Also, in verse 13, the Holy Spirit says, Howbeit when he, the, Holy, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Now, how are you going to find the truth? The truth is the Word. So what does that mean? How is He going to lead you and guide you into all truth? You're going to be studying the Word. If you're not studying the Word, is He going to be able to lead you and guide you into all truth? No, because He's going to give you revelation as you study the Word. It's of paramount importance that you and I spend the time in the Word, studying the Word. You must study the Word thoroughly and know the Word on all subjects. Notice it says, he will not speak of himself. Again, he doesn't originate things. He just relays what he hears from above. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come as well. He will show you things that are going to come, bring revelation of things. So you will know. You can always be one step ahead of the enemy. God will show you. He speaks to you a lot of ways. We'll be talking about this as we go through this. But remember that... When Herod was after killing all the children, the Holy Spirit warned Joseph in a dream, said, this is where you go. Go to Egypt. Get away. He was a step, always a step ahead of him. God will show you things to come, and he will bring revelation as you are filled with the Holy Spirit and listening to him so that you will not be surprised by the attacks of the enemy, but he'll show you what to do. He shall glorify me. Everything the Holy Spirit does will always glorify Jesus. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Anything that's supposedly of the Holy Spirit that doesn't glorify Jesus or points to some other direction, you know it's not the Lord. It's not the Holy Spirit working. And you need to steer clear of that. He goes on and says in verse 15, All the things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He will bring revelation of these things unto us. Another thing that we see about the Holy Spirit, which is important to be led by the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit who comes into you is the My Spirit of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27. I will put My Spirit within you, the Holy Spirit, and cause you to walk in My statutes, keep My judgments and do them. You're going to walk Line with the word, you're going to keep and guard this word, and you're going to be a doer of this word. The Holy Spirit will always bring you to the place of obeying the word, doing the word, walking in the word, guarding the word. Make sure you don't let the enemy take it out of your heart. God wants us to make sure that oh, you were listening to the Holy Spirit, and He will always direct you to do the word of God. Over in Psalms, 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. 
Again, we've got to be in the Word. The Holy Spirit cannot instruct a lot of people today because they haven't gotten in the Word. They're not in the Word. They're not being taught the way of the Lord. He's going to instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. So, as you have the Word, He's going to bring that up to your remembrance. Remember, He's going to show you the things that you are to do. We see also over in Psalms 27, in verse 11, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. The Holy Spirit is not some guesswork of what he's going to lead me in. He'll lead you in a plain path. You can know exactly what he wants you to do because of the enemies. He'll make it plain and clear to you if you are tuned in to him. And he will bring revelation to you so that you know exactly what he wants you to do. Over in Psalms 31, verse 3. For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. This is talking about the trap, the net to catch you, that the devil sets up for you. God will lead you and guide you so that you then can escape anything that he's laid for you. In fact, you'll be able to stay clear of it as you walk in the ways of the Lord and you listen to the Holy Spirit. You need his leadership in your life. Because he knows what to do. He knows all the play, what the enemy's up to. And you've got to make sure that you're listening to him and following his leading in your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Another thing that's important if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit is you've got to be focused within on listening to what he says. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. God does not dwell in a temple made with hands any longer. He dwells in a temple made without hands. That's us. And the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So, if you're going to hear Him, you want to be listening to what's coming from within you. He's going to speak from within you. A still, small voice. He'll speak to you in ways, bring scriptures up to you. You need to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit that will speak on the inside of you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Certainly, if you're walking in the ways of sin, are you going to be led by the Holy Spirit? No. In fact, you're not going to be, just, you're going to be destroyed because God's temple is holy, which temple you are. You need to make sure you're walking in holiness if you're, if you're going to listen to the Holy Spirit because He's going to manifest Himself in the midst of a holy people who are walking in His ways. Therefore, we need to stay away from all ways of sin. In fact, we see over in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, to be led by the Holy Spirit. He talks about in verse 16, about you're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. So he's come to dwell in and he wants to walk in you. And he wants to be your God and you'll be his people. But he tells us also in these preceding verses, we need to stay away from some things that are going to hinder us. The Holy Spirit is not going to be able to lead you and guide you if you're not walking right. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, we can't be yoked with unbelievers think we're going to hear from the Holy Spirit. That's contaminating to us. What fellowship has righteousness, which you are to be, walking in righteousness, with unrighteousness? The word unrighteousness is the word anomia, which means lawlessness. Those who are in violation of the law, or as Young's correctly translates it, lawlessness. You can't have any fellowship with lawlessness. If you're going, you know, if you're going to walk in the way of righteousness. Otherwise, if you're walking in lawlessness, which is sin, are you going to hear the Holy Spirit? The only thing you're going to hear from Him is He's going to convict you of your sin and call you to repentance. But you're certainly not going to hear much else. He's going to call you to repentance in your life. Then also He says, what communion has light with darkness? None. We can't have anything to do with any darkness. What concordeth Christ with Belial? Anything that's of the devil, you stay away from it. That's why. There's hardly anything you can listen to on the TV or any movies or any in the secular world that won't contaminate you. It's not coming from God. It's coming from the enemy. You don't want to listen to it. What part he that believeth with an infidel? Someone who's faithless, unfaithful, not walking in the ways of the Lord? No. You don't want to be in fellowship with that person. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You can't have any idol idolatry in your life. God's not going to be manifested himself. And that means you've got to make him Lord of all. You can't let yourself, money, possessions, things, anything, be an idol in your life. 
God's come to dwell in us and walk in us, to be our God and to be our people, for us to be his people. So what's he sell, tell us to do? Wherefore, come out from among them. You've got to get away from these kind of things. And be separate. This word, aphorizo, means to mark off from others by boundaries. You've got to set the boundaries. I'm not going to touch these things. I'm going to stay away from them. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And then he'll begin to manifest himself to bring forth what he purposes in your life. God expects us to be holy. He said, I'll be a father unto you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You and I have these promises. What are we expected to do? Cleanse ourselves from all the ungodly things, filthiness of the flesh, and filthiness of the spirit, which are all the evil spirits in us as we cast them out. What's that going to do? It's going to perfect holiness in the fear of God. God is a holy God. The Holy Spirit is a holy spirit, isn't he? Is he going to manifest in an unholy situation? No. He's going to manifest himself in those who are going to be holy before the Lord. So, <clears throat> God wants you to get holy and walking in the ways of the Lord. We see also over in Romans chapter 12, Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, that your reasonable service. If we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, we present our body a living sacrifice to Him. And we're going to be holy before the Lord, which is acceptable or means well-pleasing unto the Lord. That's your reasonable service, what we should do. And also he says, be not conformed to this world. Certainly, if we're walking in the ways of the world, we're not going to be led by the Holy Spirit. We've got to be tuned into Him. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's your mind getting renewed to the Word of God. And what does the Holy Spirit use to bring to your remembrance? The Word. So He's going to quicken the Word to you. So you need to get away from the things of the world, present your body holy before the Lord, no sin in our body, and we're going to get our mind renewed to the truth so we can be led in the path of, by the Holy Spirit that he has for us. James chapter 4, verse 4, speaks of the fact of those who have what they become if they are a part of the world or walking in the ways of the world. James 4, 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses. Well, that means they have separated themselves from God and joined themselves to somebody else. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Many Christians today do not hear the Holy Spirit because they have one foot in the world and one foot in God. You will not hear. You'll be deceived with all kinds of things. You're taking unholy spirits into you, and they will deceive you left and right. And people think it's the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. You must understand, this world is under the domination of the enemy, we see in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that's in the world, not some, all that's in the world. The lust of the flesh, that's how it operates. Lust of the eyes, I want, I want, you know. Pride of life, it's not of the Father, it's of the world. No, oh, that's trouble. The world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The ones who are going to be led by the Holy Spirit are the ones who are doing the will of God and have separated themselves from the things of this world. It is mandatory. Having the Word in you is so important to be led by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. My son, keep my father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother, Bind them continually upon thine heart, tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it, this is the word, shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep you or guard you. When thou awakest, it shall talk with you. The word will talk with you. And how's that happening? Through the Holy Spirit, who's going to bring these things up to you. Scriptures will come to you. So the word is going to lead you. The word's going to keep you. The word is going to talk to you. 
by the Holy Spirit who's going to bring these things up to you. It's so important. Because the commandment is a lamp, the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. He's always going to lead you according to the word, which is the light. The commandment is a lamp. It'll show you the path that you and I are to walk in. This is why you've got to spend time getting the word in you. And remember, in the New Testament, the word gets written in your heart and in your mind. Hebrews 8.10, This is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. That's why you also got to guard your heart. Because the enemy will try to get the word out of your heart so you have nothing for him, for the Holy Spirit to bring to your remembrance because it got taken out. You got to keep the word in your heart. He says, I'll be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. We must have the word in us so the Holy Spirit can bring the word to our remembrance. Now, another thing that's important if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, the things that you hear or listen to or read or, receive, or thinking of receiving, you've got to be sure they're right. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. This is speaking about the Bereans when they came to Berea. And it says, these, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received, this is the word decamai, this is not the word lambano, this is the word means accepting something that's coming to you, as the word was being brought to them. They accepted the word with all readiness of mind. They needed to be ready for what? To be sure that they were ready to receive this, but also they had to be ready to be sure this was right. And notice it says they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. This is of paramount importance. If you don't search the scriptures, and find it so, and you receive something that's contrary to the word, you just got a doctrine of the devil that came into you. You just got deceived by a false teaching or some false thing that came into you that's not in line with the truth. This is why you must always check everything out that you see, you read, anything in line with the word. If it's not in line with the word, it's not from the Lord, and you're going to be led in a wrong path because you'll, you'll embrace that and start doing wrong things. What's the problem we see in the body of Christ today? Many people follow what a church says, what a denomination says, what a particular teacher says, or whatever it is, instead of checking it out and finding out it's in line with the Word. We must examine the Word, search the Scriptures to see if the things that are said are so. Otherwise, you can be deceived because there's doctrines of devils and teachings of men that are all over the place. Look at all the doctrinal differences there are in all these different subjects throughout the body of Christ. You know there's major problems because they have not searched the scriptures. So, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to search the Word of God and know the Word of God to be sure it's in line with the truth. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. Prove all things. You need to test and examine all things to be sure this is right. Hold fast to that which is good, of course. Get rid of that which is not of the Lord. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, because remember, He's always going to be in line with the Word. Another thing that's going to be important is you're going to operate by faith. Everything that you do will be with your faith, which is in the realm of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, We walk by faith, not by sight or that which is of the outward appearance or by the senses or anything in the natural. The Holy Spirit is spirit, and he's going to bring spiritual revelation to you and speak to you spiritual truths, and he's going to show you the way to walk in, and it will be in the way of the Spirit. You walk by faith in the ways of the Spirit, and that is so important. Another thing, in Proverbs, Chapter 3, verse 5. We sang that song today. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Therefore, you've got to trust in the Lord. You've got to really trust in him with all of your heart that he's going to lead you and guide you in line with his word. And you can't lean your own understanding and try to figure it out. No, God brings revelation to th you, and he, when he, remember, he leads you in a plain path, so he will reveal things, but don't try to get your own understanding in the way, otherwise you can make a mess of things. 
And you'll see God leads you step by step, so you've got to listen to what he tells you because he's going to lead you step by step. You don't figure it out yourself. In all thy ways you acknowledge him. Look for him to direct everything that you do. And he says, the promise is, he shall direct thy paths. He'll direct you. So have confidence that God will direct you by the Holy Spirit and show you the right things that you are to do. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 11. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. The Holy Spirit, remember, he teaches you the word, the way of wisdom. Wisdom comes because of you hearing and doing the word, which brings revelation knowledge as you hear the word, and then you do it, brings spiritual understanding, and as you do it consistently, wisdom will be imparted unto you. See, this is why those people that just are taught but don't do the word, they don't gain wisdom. Wisdom comes from those who hear and do the word, it's imparted unto you. So the way of wisdom is going to be revealed to you because you're taking the word and you're doing it, you're walking in it. I've led thee in right paths. He will never lead you in a wrong path. If you were went down and said, well, that looks like, I guess that was a wrong path. Well, that must not have been the Holy Spirit. That was something else. Either you or, or the enemy working. God will always lead you in the right paths. You must have confidence in him. Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart deviseth his way from what's in your heart. That's why you've got to make sure your heart is right. And how is your heart going to be right? Not only because you've confessed your sin and received forgiveness, but also you have the word in your heart and you're guarding your heart so it doesn't get any evil in it. You can have doubt in your heart. You can have evil in your heart. You can have belief in your heart. You can have all kinds of negative. You can have things sown in your heart that aren't right. That's why the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence. You've got to guard your heart so nothing's coming in. If you've got a mixture of all kinds of garbage coming into you, it's going to affect you in your heart. That's why get rid of everything that is not of the Lord, turn it off, do not watch this stuff that's going to pour filth into you. Oh, it's just family-friendly, even programs. It's still pouring ways of the flesh into you and pouring garbage into you. Movies? No way. I haven't watched a movie in 30-some years or whatever. I never will watch one again. I don't want to ever watch a movie. I want to know truth, the Word of God. It's not truth. Man's heart devises his way. But the Lord directs his steps. That's what you want. Step by step by step. God's going to direct your steps. Otherwise, you're not the one that makes the steps. God's the one who directs the steps. In fact, we see a scripture to understand in Jeremiah 10, verse 23. Look what it says. O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. If you're directing your own steps, you're not led by the Holy Spirit. You're walking your own walk. How many of us have walked our own walk and it went all kinds of wrong directions? Didn't see things pan out like it should have. Everything that you do, you're to walk in the steps directed by the Lord. It'll be by the Holy Spirit. It'll be in line with the Word of God and God will speak to you and show you what to do. Step by step. So you've got to have your heart right, guard, write things in your heart, and then you've got to make sure you're going to get his leading on the steps and you're not going to choose your own way. Otherwise, you'll make a mess of your, of your life. You know, you may look back and say, boy, I have made a mess. Look at all the things that I did that never panned out or wrong choices. That's why it's imperative for us to be led by the Holy Spirit. No more mistakes. We don't want any more mistakes. We've had enough things. We want to make sure we're walking the right walk from now on. Psalms 37 verse 23 tells us another thing that's important. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Notice this word good. Can you see it on the screen? It's italicized. Why is it italicized? Because it's not in the Hebrew. And it's, but it's why did they put it in there? Because it's trying to tell you something about that you need to pay attention to. The word for man, this is not the normal word for man in the Hebrew. It's the word geber, which means the strong man, the warrior man. So, the steps of the warrior man are ordered by the Lord. What does that imply? 
If you're going to walk in the steps of the Lord led by the Holy Spirit, you've got to be a spiritual warrior and you've got to learn to operate in spiritual warfare to conquer the enemy because the enemy will try to deceive you. You're going to have to deal with all the attacks that the enemy would bring against you. You're going to have to use spiritual warfare and authority against the enemy so he does not lead you in any wrong paths. The steps, remember, as you're going these steps, is the devil going to try to block you along the way? Yeah, sure he will. He'll try to hinder you. That's why you have to know your authority. You can speak to every mountain, command it to be removed, and get it out of the way. You're going to have to deal with every attack that the enemy, or anything he tries to get you to turn to the right or turn to the left. No, you're going to walk the straight way of the word. The steps of the valiant man, the warrior man, the one who's a warrior for the Lord, are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Therefore, you're going to have to operate in spiritual warfare and become strong if you are going to be successful. As you are doing the things that the Holy Spirit wants you to do and getting the Word in you and walking in His ways, there'll be times, as we see, what happened with Samson in Judges chapter 13, verse 25, the Spirit of God began to move him at times in the camp of Dan. And this is a word which means he began to really thrust him forth, impel, drive him in the things that God wanted him to do. The Holy Spirit will really put some things on your heart he wants you to do. Make sure it's the Holy Spirit, it's not you or the flesh. You want to make sure that he will always drive you. And what he wants you to do will be something that will be in line with the word of God. And of course, any enemies that come, you're not going to bow to them. You're not going to let them to overcome you. Judges chapter 14, verse 5. Here's Samson coming down, his father and mother to Timnath, came to the vineyards of Timnath. Behold, a young lion roared against him. And that's a type of the devil. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He didn't run away from him. He got rid of that guy. He just tore him apart. He ran him as he would have ran a kid. He had nothing in his hand. You're going to destroy the works of the enemy that come against you. That's why you've got to be a warrior if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. The devil will try to hinder you and block you along the way. When mountains or hindrances come, you don't just give in and say, well, I guess that's not going to work out. No, you're supposed to get rid of that. You're supposed to knock that out and, and speak to that and command that mountain to be removed instead of backing off. You know, some people say, well, maybe the Lord didn't want me to do stuff because I had this hindrance and stuff. No, the devil just took you down and got you turned the wrong way. You should have knocked that thing out by using your faith with authority and then moved on forward to the things that God has for you. See, God wants you to use your authority to stop the works of the enemy. And you have dominion to do it every place that you go. In fact, even over in the New Testament, Acts chapter 13, here's an example. Verse 8, verse 7. The deputy of the country, like a vice president of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, he called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Oh, great. Well, what goes on? Elimus the sorcerer, so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. What are you going to do? Well, I guess maybe God didn't want me to do it because it just didn't work out. No, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't throw in the towel and give up because the devil shows up. No. What did he do? Saul, who's called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that's a key. You've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit's going to operate through you. If you're running around in the flesh, you probably won't deal with it. You won't be successful against it. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, ready for the Holy Spirit to manifest and influence you on what to do. Set his eyes on him. He said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He told him the truth and spoke it straightforward. He didn't beat around the bush and try to you know, compromise or go some other way. He told it like it was. You've got to confront things with truth. That's the only way things are going to be workable. You speak truth. He said, Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Oh, that, dealt, that dealt with the devil there. Knocked him out. What happened? What was the result? The deputy, and when he saw it was done, he believed. He was astonished. The doctrine of the Lord. <laughs> wow. That got him on the right side. The devil didn't stop it, did he? See, we cannot let the enemy 
come in and try to hinder us. What God is leading you in, you will have the enemy try to be disruptive and hinder. You've got to use your authority. Make sure you're doing exactly what's in line with the word and do what he says for him to conquer the enemies. Another principle, Genesis 24, verse 27. Here's where the servant of Abraham sent him forth to find a wife for his son. Verse 27, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Notice, because he was in the way, the way of the Lord, God led him. If you're in the way of the flesh, are you going to be led? No. If you're in the way of the world, are you going to be led? No. You've got to be in the way of the Word of God. If you're walking in line with the Word of God in the way of the Lord, then God will lead you and guide you to the place that He has for you. Verse 40. He said to me, The Lord before whom I walk. That's important. You've got to have the walk. Don't be one of these that has the talk and not the walk. It's all going to be evidenced by the fruit in your life and what you hear, say, do, walk consistently. Not just one day you're on and another day you're off. Consistency, step by step. He will send his angel with thee. That's right, the angels will go before us. And prosper thy way. Thou shalt take a wife of thy son of my kindred, my father's house. When you're walking in the way of the Lord, you're doing what he says. The angels will go before you. They will prosper your way. And they will lead you and guide you to what God has for you. Verse 48 said, I bowed my head, worship the Lord, bless the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. He found her and everything worked out and he's rejoicing here, worshiping him because he led him in the right way. God will lead you in the right way, but you have to be walking in the way of the Lord and you have to have a walk. Also, this way, remember, of the Lord is going to be a way of holiness. It will not be any other way. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8. A highway shall be there and a way. And what is it called? It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean aren't going to pass over it. No, it's going to be the ones who are holy. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. He's holy. You've got to be holy. He's going to bring revelation to you. He's going to show you things. He's going to lead you in the way. Another thing, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you're going to be speaking things into being. You're going to be speaking things to others to release what He wants you to speak to them. And in 2 Samuel 23, 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. So you've got to have confidence. The Holy Spirit's going to speak by you, but it's going to be the word. Your opinions, that's not the Holy Spirit. Your take on it, that's not the Holy Spirit. It's going to be in line with the Word. So make sure that you've got the Word in you, of course, and the things that you're going to bring forth are in line with the Word. The Holy Spirit will speak by you as long as the Word of God is in your tongue, because remember, that's what He's going to bring up before you. Another thing we must realize if we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 16. The leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. <laughs> well, that's a problem. We have a major problem in the body of Christ because many who are in the heads of the Bible schools, the teachers, many people who are, have a call of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, you know, evangelists, these ones, they're not leading people according to the word. If the leaders cause them to err, they that are led them will be destroyed. You, that's again, what's the answer? You must check everything out in line with the word so you're not in trouble. Yeah. Otherwise, you could be destroyed. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. You can't say, well, they told me such and such. 
Well, why didn't you check it out? You cannot follow people. You cannot follow leaders that do not lead in line with the word. And, you know, does, Paul does say, follow me as I follow the Lord. So there's nothing wrong with listening to someone who is bringing forth the word, but they bet you're going to follow the word that's coming forth from them, not what they say without checking it out in line with the word. Otherwise, both fall in the ditch. You'll be in trouble. Another thing, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, Psalms chapter 5, verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Remember, God leads you in a plain path. He's going to lead you in the way he wants for you. And he's going to always lead you in the way of righteousness because your enemies, your enemies trying to get you in unrighteousness. God doesn't come and, well, God causes this terrible thing to happen or the, all these evil things and then turn things around, you know. No, he leads in the way of righteousness. That's the devil working. He doesn't lead in unrighteousness or anything that's contrary to his ways. God is a righteous God and he's straightforward. He's going to make, your, the, make thy way straight before my face. He'll show you exactly what to do and make it clear to you. We've got to learn to always check things out with the Word of God. If all these people out there would have checked things out in line with the Word of God, we would have avoided a whole lot of mistakes in the body of Christ that have gone on for decades. Psalms 85 verse 13, Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Remember, he's going to order our steps. But righteousness is going to go before him. He's always going to set you in the way of righteousness. Psalms 25 tells us something else. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth. Always in line with the word. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. We also see over in verse 10, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. Now that's another thing. Just because you heard something doesn't mean He's going to lead you if you're not walking in it. Notice what He says. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto who? The guy just heard the word and, but doesn't do it? No. No as such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. You've got to walk in line with the covenant. As you do your part, then he'll do his part, and he will bring revelation to us. Otherwise, it's not a one-way street. Tell me what to do, Holy Spirit, and then you never do anything. You're kidding yourself. Any of this, this attitude of using God for all my things that I want to do is absolutely crazy. But so many people have tried to do it. It's not going to happen. Verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. You need meekness. Meekness is a submissiveness, a yieldedness, a teachableness, a humility, a lowliness, so totally submission unto him. Well, that means you get rid of pride, you get rid of the I, 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 me, me, me mentality. You're only doing what God wants you to do. You're going to follow in his ways. You're submissive, you're yielded, you're teachable, you're humble. You put, him, put his word first place in your life. Psalms 43, verse 3. O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into thy holy hill, into thy tabernacles. Everything that God's going to lead you to is going to be towards holiness. And the holy hill is the place of victory at Zion, having come up and been a conqueror. And his tabernacle is the presence of God where he's manifesting himself. His light and His truth, the Word of God, is going to lead you. And it's going to bring you, always will bring you to the right thing. That's why you can't try to do things other ways just to try to get some means accomplished. You've got to do things the right way. You've got to bring things that line with the light and line with the truth. Otherwise, it's going to go nowhere. Now, you can try all your different ways, but they're always going to fall flat. They'll never produce any results. Psalm 73 Verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. God's going to guide you with his counsel. You've got to get the counsel of the Lord. 
You can't get counsel that's contrary to anything of the Lord. What's that mean? You can't have any ungodly counsel. Why would you go to an ungodly counselor for anything? Never. Would I go to a secular counselor that's going to tell me things? No way. <laughs> Psalms 1.1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly, they're not going to tell you things in line with the word. You only want to hear counsel that's in line with the word. We're not going to listen to the counsel of the ungodly whatsoever. Chapter uh, 13, verse 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? He's been listening to something. Having sorrow in my heart daily. <laughs> Obviously, he hasn't dealt with things in his heart, right? How long shall my enemy being be exalted over me? He's not listening to the counsel of the Lord. He's listening to all this negative stuff on the inside of him. Poor old me. I'm hurt. I'm wounded. Sorrow, bitter, resentment, anger. What they did to me. That's a bunch of I, 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 me, me stuff. As long as you're an I, 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 me, me, me person, forget about being led by the Holy Spirit. You're taking counsel from you instead of listening to the Lord. Because he's going to change things. And he's going to tell you, first of all, get out of yourself and get all that dealt with and get yourself right. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Yeah, as long as you keep taking counsel in your soul. <laughs> you're going to be a tr trouble. We can't allow that whatsoever. You've got to make sure we're getting the counsel from the Lord. And it's always going to be in line with His Word. Psalms 106, verse 13. They soon forgot His works, and they waited not for His counsel. Well, I've got to make the decision now. Go ahead. If you didn't get the counsel of the Lord, you're going to fall flat. Well, I don't want to wait. Yeah, you're still in the I, 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 me, me, me stage. Forget about it. You're not going to be led by the Holy Spirit. You're just being, you know, headstrong, and I want to do it my way kind of thing. I want it now. No. you got to get the steps of the Lord. Do you want to see God's results and bring forth what he purposes? you got to listen to him. They didn't wait. Will it counsel the Lord? Well, they wanted to do it when I want it, you know. That's that old selfish spirit. you got to realize it. It is a selfish spirit that operates in many. And that's why a lot of people make mistakes because they always are jumping to it themselves. Can't do that. Psalms 107, verse 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Then when they heard it, they said, well, I want to do it this way. <laughs> well, you're not going to go anywhere on that one. Was well, that in counsel in line with the word? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, you're going nowhere. You'll fall flat. And then you'll have more problems. We want to get God's counsel. You're going to be guided with the counsel of the Lord. That's another, we'll teach a message on, about counsel here some soon. Verse 25, this is a few of the scriptures. You've said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. And that's what you have, you know, a lot of people, we see this happen with people all the time. You give them counsel of the word and they won't listen to it. You give them correction, they won't listen to it. They're going to go nowhere. You keep speaking truth to them until they come to the place of receiving the counsel and the truth and come to the place of receiving the correction, the reproof, the, the, the rebuke of the Lord. There's no, no other way. Everybody's got to come in line with the Word of God. And that's it. If you're going to be led and you're going to be successful in ministering to other people as well, that is so important. Psalms. 119. We'll do a message on the council. That's an important message. Psalms 119, verse 35. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. So, what's the path going to be in line with his commandments? You've got to know the New Testament commandments and walk after the New Testament commandments. You can't just do whatever seems right in your own sight. What does man normally do? Does whatever he seems right in his sight. Is that God's commandments? Well, not just, no, it's what I want to do. You won't be led by the Holy Spirit as long as the I, I, I is in there. You've got to put the Word of God first place, and He will show you the right way. Psalms 119, verse 105. The Word was a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Everything that you decide to do must be in line with the Word. Is this in line with the Word? Otherwise, nope, we're not going to consider that path. 
We are going to walk in line with what God wants. Also, it will never be in the ways of sin. Order my steps in thy word. Psalms 119, verse 133. Order my steps in thy word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. You're not going to be doing anything half truth and half sin kind of mixed in here in the way you do it. No. You're going to do things upright. You're going to do things right if you are going to be led by the Holy Spirit. At the same time, if you've got some wicked stuff in you that needs to be dealt with, uh, that needs to be dealt with first. Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Otherwise, come and deal with me, so then you can lead me in the right path. Until we get rid of all the wickedness out of me, am I going to be led the right way? No. I'll keep on responding out of the stuff that's in me. That's why God wants to root everything out of you that's not of Him. Get rid of all the wickedness out of you. And He will lead you in the way of everlasting. He will always lead you in the right path. Another thing. you got to make sure your mind is straight on the Word of God, renewed to the Word and thinking correctly. Because the devil will work through your mind all kinds of negative things that he will sow in you. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 7. Look what it says. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. If your thoughts aren't right in line with the Word of God, you're going to have wasting and destruction in your path because you'll make a mess of things. Because you'll do the wrong thing. You might get retaliatory. You might get resentful. You might get bitter. You might try under underhanded ways of doing things, manipulative, on and on and on, you know, all kinds of stuff. Jezebels, you know. I'll do it my way. I'll get them to do it some way, manipulate people, left and right. You, God does not work through manipulation. He didn't work through Jezebels. He works by the Holy Spirit in line with His Word. So don't get your little plans and plots to get something to done, you know. You know, you get the direction of the Holy Spirit, what He wants you to do. We also, we've got to make sure that we are walking the right paths. So it means hey, we need to think about it. Well, this plan that I'm thinking about or what the step I'm thinking about, is this the right thing I should be doing? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Ponder the path of thy feet. Ponder it. Think about it. Weigh this out. Is this right? Is this what God would do? Is this what's in line with the Word? Is this, is this going to produce good fruit? Is this going to bring forth the Word of God and the truth and do what I need to do? Let all thy ways be established. Everything that's in line with the Word is going to be the right way. Proverbs 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. We're going to do things with great integrity. We're going to make sure we're doing things that we're above reproach. But the perverseness of transgressors will destroy them. Again, anything that's got a little bit of sin in it or flesh in it or not right, it's going to fail. It's not going to be successful. And you'll end up getting a reproach over it. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 19. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Make sure your heart is in line with the word. Of course, that's why you've got to have the word in your heart. You've got to really look at your heart, test, be sure, search your heart. Is my heart right? Is this motivation coming from the Lord? Or is this just me? You're going to be in a mess. Guide thine heart. Your heart's got to be in the right way. You've got to be really watchful that you don't have any, dece any deceitful stuff working in your heart. To try to manipulate things. Psalms 37. Psalms 37, verse 31. This is going to be the key for your heart's right. The law of his God is in his heart. That's what's in the heart. That's what he's going to bring to my remembrance. That's what's going to direct me and show me what to do. None of his steps shall slide. Hey, that means all the steps are going to be coming from the Lord and they're all going to be successful. I won't be going off the wrong direction. 
You know, I'm not going to slide off and go in the wrong direction and make a mess of things. No. We're going to walk the way of the Lord. Also, you don't want to get out there and get on the devil's territory where he can get to you. You're trying to be led by the Lord, but you're making mistakes, you know. Psalm 17, verse 4, Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I've kept me from the paths of the destroyer. It means anything that's contrary to God's word, you're on the path of the destroyer. He's going to take you down. You better believe. He's, he's no stoop. He's out there wanting to come to steal, kill, and destroy. So you've got to be wise. So you don't walk in the paths of the destroyer. How are you going to keep from that? By the word. The word of of thy lips. The word of God is what we're going to walk after. Also, you need the word in you because the enemy, you, you've got to have God protecting you. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Instead of you trying to figure it out yourself because you're overwhelmed in the situation. Thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. That'll be the place of protection and refuge so the enemy can't get to you. You certainly can't function out of the emotions, out of the flesh, out of woundedness, out of all these kind of things. Despair, discouragement, depression, you know, on and on and on. That's never going to get you anywhere. You're always going to make mistakes and do things out of the flesh. We want to be led to the rock. That's the Lord. It's higher than I. Deny self. Eyes on the Lord. What's he want me to do? So I don't make any mistakes. Psalms 143. Verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. You're going to have to be a doer of it. Not just know it. Thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. He will always lead you in that is which is upright. Never any ways that are contrary to that. And it will always be straight paths that he has for you. Remember, God leads you in a plain path. It's not guesswork. You know that line statement that says, you never know what God will do. Throw that thing out of your mind forever. It's a lie. We can know exactly what God will do. It's his word. And he will show us and lead us and guide us, won't he? He'll lead us step by steps. And we never know what God will do. It's a lie from the devil. God's a performer of his word. Hebrews 12, 13. Make straight paths for your feet. Lest it be lame, he turn out of the way, but rather let it be healed. Let's walk the straight way. It's going to produce good things, including healing for you. I need to get healed of all these things. Well, get on the right path, and God will take care of it all as you do the Word. And you try you get it in another direction, and you're just going to keep going down, and you're going to have more problems that are going to come your way. We've got to walk the straight and narrow path. In fact, over in Matthew, chapter 7, all these principles are so important for you to be led by the Holy Spirit. Matthew 7, 13. Enter you in at the straight gate. That's the narrow gate. It means narrow. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many, many paths out there and they all lead to destruction. <laughs> many there be which go in thereat. That's the majority. Obviously, they're not tuned in right. And they're going all kind of ways and it always ends up in destruction. We've had enough of that. Because Straight or narrow, stenos, is the gate. And then it says narrow, but that's not meaning narrow. It's a word which means pressed. It's the word phlibo, which means to be pressed. Pressed is the way which leads unto life. Because you will go through the pressure of the enemy trying to get you off track. He just doesn't give up and say, oh, I'll just let this guy go ahead and just see all the things that God wants to accomplish be accomplished. He's going to press you. He's going to come against you. He's going to, to press you to try to get you off track. Pressed is the way that leads unto life. Few there be that find it. You're going to have to walk that straight and narrow path. Few people are finding it. In fact, it's very interesting. Acts 14, verse 22. 
Paul comes and he's finding these places where he'd set up the churches. He's confirming the souls of the disciples in verse 22, exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, it's going to happen, through much tribulation, through much pressure, this is the same with libo, it's a form of ellipsis, enter into the kingdom of God. Well, what do you mean? I just want to enter into the rule and reign of God and I don't want all this pressure. It's going to happen because the devil will fight every step of the way. You're confronting demonic spirits anyway. You're going to come against them and you're going to be knocking them out of the way anyway, all along. Every step, that's why you've got to be a warrior. You've got to learn to operate in spiritual warfare with authority and your faith and speak things into being and speak against the enemies and remove the mountains and take dominion and always be ready to do whatever God wants you to do in entering into the rule and the reign of God. You're going to go through the pressure. Not it's going to overcome you. You are going to go through it. Another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 8. God is giving you his commandments, verse 1, all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do. Remember, we're not under the Old Testament commandments, we're under the New Testament, the law of Christ, the commandments of Jesus. But you're to do them, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land, or us possess our promises, which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. 40 is the number of testing. Physical wilderness is a type of the spiritual wilderness where you are being tested as you are walking in line, learning God's ways, walking in His ways to find out whether you're going to walk the right way or not. To humble thee, He's going to humble you. Pride has to be dealt with, though you'll never be led by the Holy Spirit. You've got to get rid of the I, I, I. Again, it's just going to throw you down every time. And to prove thee, He's going to test you and try you and find out, are you going to walk in the way of the Lord or not? The devil will test you with evil to get you off track. God tests you with his word to find out whether you'll walk on the right track. And you'll do what he says. And to know what's in your heart. You know that old saying, well, God knows my heart. And yet you're doing all this evil stuff and you've got this negative stuff and you're reacting left and right. Yeah, your heart's wicked. Don't give that little nice little thing, God knows my heart, like my heart's great. You might have a whole lot of garbage in your heart that needs to be gotten rid of. He'll find out what's really in your heart. How does he know what's in your heart? Whether you're humble and whether you're walking in line with his ways and he proves you and it's test, tested out. Whether you would keep his commandments or no. Aha. God knows what's in your heart by the, by the measure that you keep the commandments of the New Testament. If you keep them, you're going to have a good heart because the word's in your heart. If you don't, eh, the word's not in your heart. Maybe it was once it got taken out. And, uh, you know, your heart's got a bunch of other garbage in it. He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee, you, know that man does not live by bread only, physical sustenance, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. You're going to live by the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead you by the Word of God that's going to be in everything in line with the Word to show you, to lead you, to guide you, and direct you in everything that you do. God wants us to make sure we're walking the way of the Lord. John chapter 10. You also have to be a sheep. If you're a goat, you will not be led by the Holy Spirit. A goat wanders off his own way. The sheep follows the shepherd right on his heels, listening to everything he does, and does not deviate out of step whatsoever. Verse 3, To him the porter openeth, and his she the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. Ah, they really have a close fellowship with each other. And he leads them out. The sheep are following the shepherd right on his heels. The goats wander off and do whatever they want to do. You must be a sheep. The ones who are the sheep are hearing and doing the word and following exactly what he says. They're so close to the shepherd, they hear his voice. Many people don't hear his voice because they're, they're not close. They're who knows where they are. You've got to be close following him, doing what he says. He puts forth his own sheep. He goes before them. That's right. 
He's leading you. You're not leading him. He's not coming around blessing your plans. He's going before you and you're following. You're listening to what the steps he tells you. Okay, this is the way. Come, follow these steps. That's it. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Again, because you're so close to the Lord, you know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. That would be anything contrary to the word, wouldn't it? How many strangers have you followed in your life when things came to you and you went and did it? <laughs> that turned out to be the wrong thing. You're following a stranger, whether you realize it or not. But will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. You don't want to know anything but what is in line with the word. You follow the Lord, he will show you what to do and lead you in the right path. Verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Those that are going to be led by the Holy Spirit will be true sheep. They will hear his voice. They will know him, and he will know the, uh, uh, us. And you're going to follow after him. God wants you to walk after his ways. And when he talks here about them knowing, knowing his voice, you know, hearing his voice, knowing them, following me. I mean, that's, that's going to, this isn't just because I need, oh, I need guidance for God to do something for me today. And last week I was a goat, <laughs> you know. Oh, I, I, today I'm a sheep, Lord. No, no, no. You've got to have a track record. You don't just become a sheep in a moment's time. You need a track record. You say, well, my track record hasn't been so good at times. Well, today's the first day of the rest of your life. Let's get on board. Let's get it straight. Let's start walking right. God will start, he'll see your heart, he'll see your commitment, he'll know what's in your heart, he'll see you're going to walk in his ways, he'll show him, show him by the fruit, he's a fruit inspector, you know, to see whether or not you're really walking right, he'll find out, and that's the one who's really following after him. Praise God. Well, we've covered a lot of things this morning, we've got a lot to cover yet tonight that we're going to talk about on this subject of the Holy Spirit being able to lead you and guide you. Many important principles that we brought forth today that need, we need to take heed to. As you will take heed to them, come in line with them, do what he says, know the Holy Spirit will lead you, he will guide you, and he will always lead you in the right path. It will always be in line in his work. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that as I have received the Holy Spirit, I am to be led by the Holy Spirit and when I'm led by the Holy Spirit, I will be a son of God. I thank you for teaching me, instructing me. Thank you for bringing all things to my remembrance. Thank you for guiding me into the truth. Thank you for showing me things to come. I will walk in the word. I will guard the word. I will do the word. And you will lead me and guide me in the right path. I will stay away from all uncleanness, anything that's not of you. I'll be out of the things of this world. I'll be filled with the Word of God. My body's going to be holy, presented as a living sacrifice. My mind's being renewed by the Word of God. I separate myself from the things of this world as the words in my heart and in my mind. It will keep me. It will lead me. It will talk to me as the Holy Spirit will bring remembrance of it. Everything I hear, I will be a good Berean and search the scriptures to see if the things are so. So I am not deceived. If I'm following the blind, if I'm blind, we both fall in the ditch. I will not allow myself to be blind. I will prove all things. I will test and examine to be sure it's in line with the word. I will walk by faith. I will trust in the Lord. I will not lean to my own understanding. I will acknowledge you in all my ways, and you will direct my paths. As I'm a hearer and a doer of the word, I will get your wisdom, and you will lead me in the way of wisdom. 
I will keep my heart right before you. I understand. It's the Lord who directs my steps. It is not in man to direct his steps. I will stop directing my own steps. I will get the leading of the Holy Spirit so I don't make mistakes any longer. I will also be a warrior because the steps of the warrior man are ordered by the Lord as I must conquer all enemies that are trying to hinder me. I will conquer every devil, every hindrance that tries to stop me from walking in the way of the Lord. I will be in the way of the Lord, the way of righteousness, the way of His commandments, the way of holiness. I will be meek, humble, yielded to Him. I thank you, Lord. I will not allow thoughts of evil in me or I'll walk in the ways of destruction. The law of God will be in my heart so my steps will not slide. And by the word, I will keep myself from the path of the destroyer. I thank you, Lord, that I will be humble and you are proving me to find out really what's in my heart and if I will keep the commandments or not. I thank you that I will walk the narrow way that leads to life, not the broad way that leads to destruction. And I will go through much pressure conquering the enemy to enter into the kingdom. I will be a true sheep. I will hear your voice. I will not be a goat. I will hear your voice. I will walk in your ways. And I will be led by the Holy Spirit in all that I do. Thank you for the Holy Spirit coming to dwell in me. I will be God inside minded, listening to the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Thank you that you will always lead me in line with the word. And I will be ready to obey the word and I will receive your counsel. I'm not receiving counsel from the ungodly or from my own heart, from negative things that have occurred. I will only be led by the Holy Spirit in line with the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding me in the path of the Lord that will bring victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We got a lot to talk about tonight. And we'll be especially talking about a lot of the ways that they lead, lead you, in different ways, and the results, the things that you can expect, and m many more principles that we need to follow, to go through, so you can see all that's involved in seeing the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Father, we praise you for all that you brought forth through your word. We thank you for your words of truth. Thank you that we're all taking heed to these things. We're going to do them to make sure we're led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.